Welcome to video 18 of Gamer to Game Developer Series 1. And in this video, we'll implement build option selection. So we've got three simple objectives. The first is to discuss the change build option script. I'll go through it really quickly because it's almost identical to the change weapon script. Then we'll update the player ask server to place construction block script and update the construction block guide script. Then we'll just assemble everything and build and run. And we won't need to make, make an icon in this video because we made the construction block icon in the previous video. So just really briefly, it's more of a refresher of how it works. So previously we had the change weapon script and that is responsible for displaying that window that shows our currently selected weapon. So now we'll have the change build option script doing the same thing for the build options. And the type of construction, well build option that we can use depends on what the currently selected build option is. So in the case, in this case, we'll only have one at the moment, which is the construction block. And there are two scripts that are interested in what the currently selected build option is. They are the player asks server to place construction block script, which is the one that allows the player to drop a construction block when they press right click and the construction block guide script. That's the one, that green guide that we constantly see in front of us, showing us where we can place a construction block. When we have the air block in the next video, it has its own guide block that has a different behavior. It can be up anywhere in the sky within range. And so that one, it too is looking, it'll look at the change build option script, looking to see if the build option is the air block. But in this video, we'll just have construction block or nothing. And if it's nothing, then the, the window that's showing this construction block here, this window will simply not be drawn. Okay, so we can go to the very first step where I'll just skim over the change build option script. I won't go into any real detail because it's almost identical. The first thing that I'll do is to define our new input. So edit project settings input. And first of all, just for the change weapon, I had set the alternative positive button to E. I'll just get rid of that and just leave it three. Now for fire three, I'll change that. So no longer fire three, it'll now be called change build option. And we do need all the spelling correct, etc., and the way it's presented. I'll change the positive button to four. And it's of the correct type, a key or mouse button. Okay, so that's it for the control. I'll now open up the change build option script. And just expand this summary here. So we can see that this script is attached to both player characters and that player asks server to place construction block script accesses the script and so does the construction block guide script. So now in the variables, you can see our enum state has none, construction block, and air block. So air block will be in the next video and that's all we'll have in series one. And then just our public state build option is equal to state.none. So that's what it starts as, it'll start as state.none, so no build option. So when the player joins the game, they need to hit the four key to go to the next build option, which will be the construction block. Then we have a bunch of variables for defining that window that'll display the construction block icon and later the air block icon to show what the currently selected build option is. And we have that texture, of course, for the construction block icon. And then we have that uh, int for cycling through the list, so going through the list, and of course the list to hold each of the states in. So in the start function, we define our GUI style. Now this GUI style here isn't really important for the texture at all. It's there in case you're not putting a texture and instead you just type in text to show what the selected item is or whatever. In that case, then this will automat automatically position it in a sensible way. Anyhow, then we go ahead and we add 
the construction block to the list and of course the state.none as well so the build list has the state.none and state.construction block and it's going to start and as we know here as we define build option starts at state.none okay then we go ahead then when the player presses the for key which is the change build option key then that variable that int gets incremented by one so it'll start say from zero it'll become one and in this case if selected build option is equal to build list .count, selected build option would be zero but in this case the list.count is two because there are two items in it and if it was incremented from zero to one then one is less than two and so that doesn't happen and that'll mean the build option will be equal to the build list item one which is the construction block so that's what would happen if the player pressed the four key okay and then quite simply we have here a bit of code that will control what is displayed in the window and very simply if build option is equal to state dot construction block then we draw that GUI label with the construction block texture and etc defining the width and height of it now if there is no if it's state dot none so you'll see here we have no if statement for that so if it's state dot none this window will simply not draw there'll be nothing there so the code in the window it only runs when we have a valid build option state okay then in the on GUI we have here if build option uh, is not equal to a state dot none so now we have here so what will happen here is that if we didn't have this check here what would happen is that we would have would have the window but would have no label inside so it'd be just empty i could write here if build option is changed build option dot state dot none and then just say gui label and some text saying no build option but better than that is just not to draw the window so that's why we have this here is if build option is not equal to change build option dot state dot none so if there's nothing no building to be no build option selected then we don't draw the window if if that isn't the case if we do have state dot um, cons anything else that's not none then we'll will draw the window so as before in the change weapon script we calculate the the left position the top position and then we draw the rect We'll define the rect and then we draw the window and you'll notice i use the window id of 10 which is above 9 so there'll be no conflict with the change weapon window okay and that is it it's very simple and yeah there's nothing really more to say so we'll move on to the next step where we'll start editing scripts We're on to our second step, which is to update the player as server to place construction block script. Okay, let's open up the script and let's start changing it. So with the summary, we'll add a new line there that this script accesses the change build option script. So the change build option script. Okay. And then we'll go into the variables area. In the cached items, we'll add that private change build option build option script. Build option script. Okay. That's it. So we're going to set up a reference to this script. So moving over to the start function, I'll put down build option script is equal to my transform dot get component. And that component is change build option. Okay. And then we'll go down to our update function. And in this bit here, we have, where we have if screen dot block cursor is true, and if the button for placing the block is clicked, which is the left click, 
and the resource is sufficient, then of course, execute the rest of the code. What I'll do is I'll just bring these down onto separate lines. So it's easier to read. I'll say here and build option script dot build option is equal to change build option dot state dot construction block. Okay, and that's it. So now it's looking for a new term and the player can't place blocks unless this is satisfied. So I can just save that. And that is it for this script. There's nothing else to change, which is good. And I'll quickly check in Unity that there's no error, no obvious errors, good. So that's it, and we can move to the next step. We're on to our last step now, which is to update the construction block guide script. And after that, we'll just put everything together and build and run. Okay, I'll open up the construction block guide script and let's start editing that. So let's add a new summary comment, which is this script accesses the change build option script. Okay, and we'll add a new variable down here, which is private change build option build option script. And really, I could just copy paste it from the other script. But I'll just type it in. So now we'll have here in the start function, we'll set up that reference build option script is equal to my transform dot get component And of course, the component is change build option. Okay, so now let's make use of that. So here where we have if screen dot lock cursor is true, now we will have and change build, well, build option script dot build option is equal to change build option dot state dot construction block. Okay. Now there is something additional to add, and that is another else statement. So let me look at how this was working. So we had else's there, else's here, there, and everywhere. What I need to make sure of now is that the renderer is switched off when the build option has changed. So that's why I'm looking at these else statements now, because I'm pretty sure I'll need to add another set here. So, because obviously when the player changes their build option, then the construction guide block, well, the block, the construction block guide, that shouldn't show anymore. So it needs to hide itself. So let me just look here what this bracket belongs to down here. It belongs all the way over there. So that would probably mean that this is the place to put it. Okay, so this is the catch-all. So else construction block guide dot render dot enabled is false. So I'll save that, and hopefully I've gotten that right. I believe I do. It makes sense to me. So if the once it's changed, if the build option is changed, then suddenly this is no longer true anymore. This is this condition is not met, and this rest of the code is not going to run. You see, and because of that, the else statement will never get seen, and the render will never get turned off. But by putting it on the very edge of this if statement, the very first if statement, by putting it outside, well, in parallel to that, I guess, like if, if it's not this, 
then disable the render. So by doing that, I'm making sure that it can get disabled and that guide block will disappear when the player changes their build option. Okay, so I'll save that, I already have. So that's all good. I'll go to Unity and check that nothing's gone wrong, which is good. So that means we can start putting everything together. So to both of our players, to the blue player, I'll add this new script here, the change build option script. So I'll just drag it in and it'll need an icon, the con construction block icon. So I will just drag that in as well, construction block icon, and just drop it in. We had already made this in the last video. Okay, I'll do the same for the red player. Click on them, drag in the new script, and drag in the corresponding texture. Okay, and that is it, and we've updated the other two scripts, so we can build and run. So file, build and run. And I'll do the same thing. I'll set the server up here, even though it doesn't display so well. I mean, it doesn't display so well in the editor. I'll just set up the server here so we can see any errors that pop up that's more important. So I'll connect, I'll join the red team. Okay, and let me just reposition this. So of course in the standalone, if I decided to run it in the standalone, it'd draw no problem, but this is extra wide. And because of that, it's not fitting so well. Okay, I'll return. Okay, so as it's starting out, of course you remember, that the build option state is none, so there's no window being drawn. I hit the four key, and there we go. Our construction block is suddenly, or well, the guide has appeared, has appeared, and the window is being drawn and the icon is visible inside. I can place construction blocks, so no problem now. Now let's say I just press four again. Okay, it's disappeared. And the construction block guide has disappeared. I can press right click as much as I want, but nothing happens and there was no need to really shoot there, just felt like it. But okay, so that's it. That's all we needed to implement in this video. Very, very simple, the ability to choose our build option. And when we have the air block in the next video, we'll have another build option, which is nice. So now you can see that we have some, at least some organization to the abilities that our player has, meaning their weapons and their build options. So now a player can actually just quickly cycle through them without trying to activate all of them at the same time. So I'll just disconnect. I will connect as a blue player. Just make sure everything's okay. I'll hit the four key. Yes, it's there. All good. I'll hit it again, it's gone. Yeah, of course I can use the block eraser to delete blocks. And that is it, okay. So we've reached the end of this video. And all we did was just implemented the build options, being able to select our build options. And in the next video, we'll implement the air block. That'll be a pretty long video because we'll implement everything that the construction block had for the air block. But the difference is, is that since the scripts will be very similar, I'll just skim through them very quickly, since they're already covered in the construction block videos. And the only difference is, is that the construction block is placed on the ground and can only be placed adjacent to existing blocks, whereas the air block can be placed independently in the sky or seemingly on the ground. Okay, so that'll be the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then.